Welcome to Scripture Seeds, a time to get into God's Word together, to share what it is that He's placing on my heart in hopes that it inspires you to let Him speak to yours. I am no theologian, biblical expert, or historian. I'm simply here to share what it is that I'm hearing from the Lord in my own prayer time in hopes that it may move your heart in some way or even inspire you to do the same. So let's get started. Luke chapter 6 verses 46 through 49. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, but do not do what I command? I will show you what someone is like who comes to me, listens to my words, and acts on them. That one is like a person building a house who dug deeply and laid the foundation on rock. When the flood came, the river burst against that house, but could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who listens and does not act is like a person who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the river burst against it, it collapsed at once and was completely destroyed. These verses are so powerful for a number of reasons. I, as I was praying over these verses and just sitting with the Lord in them, a bunch of new things started coming to the surface of the meaning of these words. I think, of course, you know, we hear this and Jesus is very clear. I mean, it's very clear what he's telling us that you cannot just listen to these things. You need to act on them. If you do not act, then you're going to be like a house built without any foundation. And as soon as the storms come, you're going to be swept away. This is so important. We can't just speak about doing things and have good intentions, but ultimately we need to take the actions. We need to put into practice what it is that we're consuming in his word. And as I was getting deeper and deeper into this in prayer, I just felt this slight little nudge from the Holy Spirit. And it was like, he just illuminated for me, rock, the word rock in here. He says that the ones who build their lives on doing, let's see, I'll read it. I will show you what someone is like who comes to me, listens to my words and acts on them. That one is like a person building a house who dug deeply and laid the foundation on rock. When the flood came, the river burst against the house, but could not shake it because it had been well built. He uses the term rock here to describe what it's like to build a solid foundation, not just on listening, but doing God's will. And immediately my heart, my mind in prayer was led to the other infamous scripture about rock. As Catholics, we know in um, Matthew, when Christ gives Peter the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And he tells him that he's going to build his church upon Peter. The Lord actually changes Peter's name to rock. And so he's saying he's going to build his church on Peter, the rock. And he changes his name to to rock. I don't think that that's any coincidence. (laughs) As I was reading these scripture verses, it just was blowing my mind how this scripture you can apply to the church, right? So Peter was what the Lord tells us he built his church on. And if you look for the Lord's church today, 
in a way, the Lord was telling us to look for Peter. And if we look for Peter in today's world, we can find an unbroken chain of succession all the way back to that moment between Jesus and Peter. And we can find that unbroken chain in the Catholic church. That line has not been broken for nearly 2000 years. Incredible. And as I was praying with these verses to not just listen, not just consume, right? But, but do. I started realizing that everything in God's church, in his church that he's given us, there are tangible physical elements in the sacraments. We're not just passively listening, though we can listen. And, and Jesus here says, you know, you should listen. He's not saying not to listen, but he's saying, do not only listen, act. And I, it, it was just, I felt in prayer, like I was being shown the connection here that the sacraments, they are physical, they're tangible, and they require action. We have to go to the sacraments. We have to make the decision. We have to do something in the physical realm. And God is able to bestow his graces out on us. Of course, he's not bound by the sacraments. It's not only in the sacraments that he's able to do, give us grace. But these are surefire ways that the Lord has provided vessels of his grace to us in his church. And so if we build our lives on the sacraments, on the church, on this rock, right? We are doing, we're not just listening, but we're actually actively doing God's will. And when we do that, we are building our lives on this rock in a way that when the winds come and the floods blow and the winds blow and the floods come and the storms come, we will stand firm. And so today, I just want to invite you to maybe sit with this passage in this new light, in the truths of the church, in the power of the sacraments, and how the Lord is equating the same sort of language, you know, build on this rock. That's what a person's like, that, you know, it's like they built on rock. And then when Jesus gives Peter the keys, he says, I'm going to to build my church on this rock and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Right. So I invite you to just to sit with this and um, allow maybe the Holy spirit to illuminate something for you there. I know it was huge for me and, and I, it felt like such a tangible physical invitation to spend time frequenting the sacraments to receive Jesus in the Eucharist. It's such a physical thing, right? Like he literally wants to feed us with his body and blood because that strengthens us spiritually for this pilgrimage on earth and to make those decisions in our lives to tangibly see Christ in the sacraments, in his church and to build our lives on this rock. And that by doing that and making those decisions and acting on this, we are receiving God's grace and we're building this foundation of our lives on these truths, on this grace that we're receiving. And when the winds blow and the storms come, we will be able to stand firm in our foundation versus, you know, just going through life. And listening at some level to these things, but not actually actively doing as God has asked us when he says, take and eat, right? Like this is my body that we need to actually put what we're, what we think, what we believe, what we hear, what we read, we have to put it into action. This is what Christ is asking us today. And what a better way to do that than in the sacraments to physically, tangibly receive Christ, to seek him in confession. Maybe it's been years since we've been 
to go back to the sacraments because that is where we get our roots. That is how we build our lives on the rock. That's how we know that we are building a strong foundation for the storms of this life. Friends, that is all I have for you today. This is the last episode of season two. I just want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being an active listener. I'm so glad if you're new here that you found our show, our podcast recently. And I, yeah, I just want to thank you for all your prayers, for all your support, whether you bought something from the To Grow Good shop, whether you signed up for Scripture Seed Sessions, which by the way, we are going through now. So please pray for the group of women that are going through it. It's been a beautiful gift and a beautiful grace for all of us. Um, whether you follow us on Instagram, whether you've joined our email list, whether you've subscribed to this show, whether you've just listen to a couple of the episodes. I just want to thank you because I know that God has plans for this. I know, I just know it in my heart. I know, I, I know now the difference between a calling and a whim. <laughs> and I just know this is continuing to grow within my heart. I, and there's so many God winks as we call them here. Right. And so many just affirmations and signs from the Lord that this is what he wants to be happening. So many of you after Cheryl's story just last week reached out and were just sharing and pouring your hearts out about how much this story impacted you. I know it impacted me so much. And just after every story, there's different ones that reach out to different people and that touch them profoundly. And I just want to thank you because you, you listening or buying something from the shop or just in any way, I'm praying for the show, any way that you've helped, you are making this mission happen. You know, like it, it takes two, my friends. I can't only be here. There's got to be someone on the, on the listening side. So thank you for being that person. I feel so blessed and truly grateful to be able to bring these stories out to the world that God is alive. He is real. And if you're listening to this right now, he wants a deep and personal, lasting, intimate, and unique relationship with you. And he wants to show up in your life in tangible, real ways. Uh, it, it's been such a gift to be able to share so many incredible conversion stories and to get to share some of my heart and my continued prayer time and just what I feel like the Lord's putting on my heart and all of you who have reached out about scripture seeds. I have some people I know that listen to the scripture seeds um, and just they love the scripture seeds, which has been such a beautiful thing too. just the different ways that the show resonates with different people. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please stay in touch. Let's stay in touch the next couple months. The show will be back January 18th. So until then, sign up for the email list, join us on social media at to grow good, email me if you want to chat, I would love to meet you. It's to grow good podcast at gmail.com and pray for me, pray for this show, pray for God's will to be done in all things. I know that his timing is perfect and um, we need the support in order to grow. And so if you feel called to support this mission, you can do so by visiting to growgood.com slash support or patreon.com slash to grow good. And I know some of you do not want to um, give on a monthly basis, but you'd rather do a one-time lump sum donation. If that's the case, just reach out to me um, and we will set something up. I can send you where to send a check or um, other options. I don't want you to not give just because you're not sure how or the best way that you feel comfortable. And if you do not feel comfortable contributing financially, that's okay too. You know, just know that um, God's going to make it happen when he wants things to grow and expand and for it to happen. And I'm just letting it all up to God. So pray for, you know, over the next couple of months that he takes this mission wherever he wants it to go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being a listener. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for leaving a written review. I shared earlier, but that is just the best way to like 
give me so many affirmations about how this show is impacting you or your journey or how these stories have, have touched you. It's like giving a podcaster a bouquet of flowers. Okay. So if you want to do that, I would so love if you could leave a written review. It helps to refer the show to others um, who may be seeking something like this, maybe seeking God in their life. And then lastly, share the show, share the show, share episodes. If something comes up and you're like, Ooh, I think so-and-so would like that. Realize that could be the Holy spirit nudging you, asking you to share this with that person in, in your life. So share away my friends and spread the word. I am so grateful to you that everything in the to grow good shop is now massively on sale. Pretty much everything is 50% off. So go buy something, support the show, support this mission. If you feel called or you want to help out, or you just are looking for gifts in this, um, in this season, as we approach Christmas coming up on the holidays, lots of great gift ideas and different things there. Everything's on sale massively right now as an end of season celebration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we will see you on January 18th for season three. Have a great break. Happy new year. Merry Christmas. All the things have a peaceful and restful advent and I will see you in the new year. All right. Bye friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of to grow good. There are a number of ways that you can support this mission. Follow us on Instagram at to grow good for daily updates, prayer reflections, fun content, and more. Join the email list at togrowgood.com for free prayer resources and monthly newsletter with the most impactful Catholic content along my journey home to the church, weekly devotions written by Catholic women and more. Share this episode with a friend, a family member, a loved one, or a coworker who might enjoy this episode as well. Leave a written review on Apple Podcasts to help refer the show to others who may be seeking. You can pray for this show to reach the souls that God wishes for it to reach. It would mean the world. If you are praying for it to grow good, please be sure to reach out and let me know at togrowgoodpodcast at gmail.com. Finally, you can help to cover the costs to create and produce this show. For as little as the cost of one ice latte a month, you can join our little community here at To Grow Good, the branches of the vine. You directly support the mission to get these incredible stories of God at work out into the world. And as a gift back to you, you'll receive a bunch of free gifts from the To Grow Good shop, free guided audio scripture meditations, a monthly bonus episode in which I share in-depth parts of my own conversion journey home to the church, and a community platform where we can connect and share our hearts with one another. I cannot wait to meet you. Visit patreon.com slash to grow good to learn more and prayerfully consider joining us today.